Hello guys, welcome to Nerdy Gaming and for this video we will be doing a build featuring the Be Quiet PureBeast 500DX. I will be guiding you and showing you a step-by-step -step process on how you can build your first gaming PC. Before we check the parts we will be using, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more tech content. And every product we are featuring here is available on our website at Nerdy gaming.com so let us check the parts we will be using first before doing the build also if you want another video on how to choose the right pc components make sure to comment down below if you want one and we will be doing a dedicated video for that so for the parts we will be using for this build we have the ryzen 5 3600 for the cpu Asus B550F Gaming Wi-Fi 2 for the motherboard, Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 CPU cooler, PNY 2 by 8 GB 3200 MHz for the RAM. And so for the SSD, we will be using a Sabrent 2 TB Rocket 4 Plus G. We also have the Be Quiet PureBase 500 DX case, which is this case, and we have the Be Quiet Pure Power 11 700 watts 80 plus gold semi modular power supply. And as for the GPU, we will be using the GTX 1060 for now because the PNY RTX 3060 we ordered hasn't arrived yet for this build. But GTX 1060 is still a good value for money for beginner builders. We will be doing a performance video soon if GTX 1060 is still worth it or a good choice for 2023. So stay tuned for that. A quick disclaimer here, all the parts here are extra parts here in the store, so you can either use this exact list or have someone create a better list for your budget like what we do at nerdyapegaming.com. Okay, let's do the build. So the first step you need is to prepare the motherboard. We will be doing an AM4 build, so this is a platform for AMD. So for Intel, it will also be different. The way I do the build is to put as many parts as I can into the motherboard first. Once the motherboard is ready, we will install the CPU. Grab the CPU on the sides to avoid the pins and locate the tiny golden triangle which is usually at the bottom left part of the CPU. And then we will match the golden triangle in the motherboard socket which in this motherboard is in the top left corner. So I'm going to position the CPU so that the golden triangle in the CPU is also placed at the top left corner. Make sure to match both the socket and the CPU. For beginners, these triangles are really small so you might need to make sure where the triangles are located. After that, gently lift the lever in the motherboard socket to the top. Then while grabbing the CPU on its side, gently lower the CPU onto the socket and let it fall in place. Do not slide, push, or apply pressure to the CPU as it might bend the CPU pins. Once the CPU is in place, check all four sides of the CPU and make sure it's fully seated on the socket before lowering the lever. Now, for installing the memory sticks, if you have four sticks, then you don't have to worry about the placement of the RAM since you will be filling up all the four DIMM slots. But if you have two sticks of RAM, then you need to make sure that they are in the correct DIMM slots to take advantage of the dual channel. Some motherboards have an indicator on what to occupy, but if you don't have one, usually you can find that in your user manual. The first thing we need to do is open up the tabs in the slot 2 and slot 4. Usually if you have two sticks, you will install the RAM sticks away from your CPU. Every RAM stick has a gap in the middle so you need to align that gap on the memory to the notch of the, on the DIMM slots. Once you have the correct orientation of the RAM sticks, lower it down and push it with a little bit of force and you will hear a click on both sides. If you have successfully installed the RAM sticks, the tabs on the side will be closed. So make sure the RAM sticks are seated properly and the tabs are closed. The next thing we will put into the motherboard is the M.2 SSD. If you will not use M.2 SSD and will be using a 2.5 or 3.5 inch HDD, then you can skip this part. Most motherboards will have one or more M.2 slots between the PCIe slots 
or sometimes at the back of the motherboard and they have pre-installed SSD covers or sometimes M.2 SSDs have included heatsinks like the one here on the Sabrent M.2 SSD. You always want to install the M.2 SSD at the top slots. So what you need to do is remove the screws at the M.2 heatsink and remove the plastic cover in the thermal pad. Then slide in your SSD, aligning the gap in the M.2 SSD to the notch in the M.2 slot of your motherboard, which is similar to how you install the RAM stick. If the M.2 slot doesn't have the standoffs needed, check your motherboard and you will see a small plastic bag containing the M.2 standoff and the screw. Once the M.2 SSD is in place, use the included M.2 screw that comes in with your motherboard and tighten it gently. Then install the M.2 cover back into the motherboard. This step will vary depending on what CPU cooler you will be using. If you will be using a stack cooler or CPU air cooler, then you can follow this step. But if you are using an AIO, you will need to install that once the motherboard is in the case. So for this scenario, we will be using a CPU air cooler, which means we will need to install the cooler first. Installing a CPU air cooler may vary depending on what brand you will be using. So my suggestion is to always consult your user manual or installation guide that comes to your CPU cooler. The first thing you will do is remove the pre-installed mounting bracket in the motherboard but leave the CPU backplate as we will be needing that. Usually on AM4, the stack backplate is commonly used by many coolers so you won't have any issues installing other things at the back of the motherboard. Once it is removed, install the spacers on the four screw holes and place the mounting brackets at the top. You will see a guide in the bracket on where to put the screws if it is for old AMD or AM4, and then align the bracket holes to the backplate holes and screw it in. After that, remember to add thermal paste. Most CPU air coolers don't have pre-installed thermal paste, but if your cooler comes in a pre-installed thermal paste, then you don't need to add more. Also, make sure to remove the plastic cover from the copper plate of the CPU cooler. Many people always forget to remove the plastic cover and their thermals are always a mess so make sure to check that to avoid issues. Once the mounting bracket and thermal paste are done, remove the fans of the CPU cooler so we can have a room to install this beefy cooler. Align the cooler into the bracket and screw the CPU cooler at the top part. Screw them evenly to avoid damaging your CPU. After that, you can now install your CPU fans using the metal pins. You need to follow the correct orientation of the fans when you remove them to avoid negative pressure and get better cooling. So for a bonus step, if you are using a beefy cooler like this, I suggest installing the CPU power cable first before installing the motherboard since it will be hard to reach it later when the motherboard is already in the case. This bonus step is only applicable if you have a modular power supply, but if you will be using an AAO, this won't be an issue. After putting all the components we can fit into the motherboard, you can now prep the case and install the motherboard into the case. So for this step, we will now plug our case fans. For this case, we will just fix the orientation of the included case fans. But if you have third-party case fans and you want to populate all the fan slots, then all you need to do is set the correct orientation. Three fans intake at the front, three exhaust fans at the top, and one exhaust fan at the rear. And then if you have the splitter, plug all the case fans into the splitter and then plug the splitter into the PWM fan header of the motherboard. Before installing the motherboard into the case, make sure all the motherboard standoffs are installed or at least every hole in the motherboard will align to the pre-installed standoffs to avoid damaging your motherboard. Once the case is ready, the first thing you will need is to install the IO shield. Most motherboards have an IO shield that isn't pre-installed, so you will need to install that first before anything else. If your motherboard then is like this with pre-installed IO shield, then you can just go ahead and install the motherboard. 
gently lower down the motherboard, align the IO shield first, and then align the screw holes of the motherboard to the standoffs of the case, and then install all the screws needed. So after installing the motherboard, we will now proceed with the installation of the power supply. If your power supply is a modular power supply, you will need to install all the cables first. Same goes for a semi-modular, which is the power supply we have. But you don't need to install the 24-pin and 8-pin power cable because they are already installed. The cables have their own labels, which one goes to the motherboard in other parts and which one goes to the power supply, so you won't be confused. So after installing the power supply, you might need to route the cables and install all the necessary cables for the components like the motherboard, CPU power if you haven't installed that, case fans, and SATA power cables. And then after installing the power supply, I usually install the front panel ports into the motherboard first before doing anything else. In this way, I still have a lot of room to work with, especially the cables for the power and reset which is really hard to install if you already have the GPU installed. Once all the needed cables are installed, like the power supply cables for the motherboards, PWM header for the fans, and the front I.O. ports, we can now install the graphics card. The first thing you need to remember is always install the GPU at the top PCI slot to take advantage of the full PCI lanes. Then remove the PCIe bracket at the back of the case that corresponds with the top PCIe slot. Depending on the thickness of your card, you might need to remove an additional bracket. After removing the bracket, open up the tab in the PCIe slot and slide in the GPU. If your graphics card is brand new, make sure to remove the protective cover from the side and the back where the ports are located. If the GPU is successfully inserted, you will hear a click or until the tab locks in place. If your graphics card is sagging a little bit, lift the card a little bit and then tighten the screw to hold the GPU. After that, don't forget to plug your graphics card power cable. Another bonus step before finalizing the build, make sure everything is plugged in and you can do a test boot and see if everything works fine. If the PC is booting up properly, the fans are spinning and every part is powering up, then you can now proceed in tidying up the build. This case offers good cable routing and some free Velcro cables so you can use that to tidy the cables. There's no specific way to do the cable management, either shove all the cables below the power supply shroud, group the cables to make them clean, or just leave it as it is. You can route the cables at the back any way you like, so don't worry too much as long as the cables are secure. But of course, since this is your very first build, put a little bit of effort into the cable management so that it will look nice. As for our final step, make sure to double check everything. Make sure everything is in place and now you're ready to install the panels back. You can now proceed in installing your Windows operating system, enable XMP, and download all your games. I hope you learned something from this guide. For beginner PC builders, my last tip for you is if it is hard to understand, always consult your user manual. And for experienced PC builders, if I missed something, feel free to share a comment below so others can see it as well. And that's it for our step-by-step -step PC build guide featuring the Be Quiet. 
pure base 500 DX. Every PC part we featured in this video is also available at nerdyapegaming.com. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech content like this. And thank you for watching and see you in the next video.